Name for me the last U.S. aircraft carrier sunk by enemy combat operations. Well, if you're a World War II history buff, you would say the USS Bismarck Sea, sunk by the Japanese in the Battle of Iwo Jima in early 1945. If you're talking about World War II, you'd be right, but I'm not. If you thought about more recent times, you would say the USS America sunk in May 2005, about 250 miles southeast of Cape Hatteras. She sits upright in nearly 17,000 feet of water. The Navy scheduled her for a series of uh, weapons tests, and eventually she was sunk. But remember, I said enemy combat operations. Weapons testing, that doesn't count. Then incidentally, the Navy sunk her because they wanted to test a variety of weapons and see how tough aircraft carriers could be and to improve future aircraft carrier design. So that's not it. If you're a diver, you would say the USS Gariskany off Pensacola, Florida. She was sunk in May 2006, but that was a controlled sinking uh, in order to make the Great Carrier Reef. Divers can actually dive on the thing now, and it's a, it's a diving hotspot. That's not it. Now here is a story you most likely have never heard. The boat class aircraft carrier USS Card CVE-11 was launched in February of 1942 at the Seattle Tacoma shipyard. She was named for Card Sound just south of Biscayne Bay in Florida. She mostly escorted convoys crisscrossing the North Atlantic during World War II. Her aircraft were responsible for protecting the convoys from German U-boats. Her planes are credited with sinking eight U-boats during the war. She carried 12 Avenger torpedo bombers and 16 Wildcat fighters. The card received a Presidential Unit Citation, the American Campaign Medal with one battle star, the Europe-Africa Mideast Campaign Medal with two battle stars, and the World War II Victory Medal. After the war, she was decommissioned in May of 1946. However, in May of 1958, she was recommissioned as the USNS card. So what's the difference between the USS and USNS ships? Those are both ship prefixes used to identify United States vessels. The USS stands for United States Ship and is always used to identify a commissioned U.S. Navy-owned and operated ship. In other words, the crew are all U.S. Navy sailors. The USNS stands for United States Naval Ship and it is used to identify a non-commissioned ship that is owned by the U.S. Navy but is operated by the Military Sea Lift Command. In other words, the crew is primarily civilian. The USNS card was now responsible for transporting aircraft and heavy equipment, supplies, and personnel from the U.S. to Vietnam. The card regularly docked in the port of Saigon to load and unload its cargo. The Viet Cong had operatives constantly observing the river and the port. With the regularity of the card and her sister ship, the Corps, it was decided to plan an attack to sink one of the ships. Part of the plan involved gaining access to the port through Saigon's sewer system. The bombs had to be sized accordingly and also had to float as the Viet Cong commandos had to swim part of the way. The bombs were crudely constructed, but that didn't matter as long as they worked. The first attack was carried out on 29 December 1963 against what turned out to be the USNS Corps. The commandos dragged the bombs through the sewer system and swam up to the ship and attached them. They set the timers and swam away. However, the bombs failed to explode. The two commandos then had to go back and retrieve them as they wanted the operation to be a secret. They determined that the batteries and the timers were old and had run down, therefore no explosion. The next opportunity presented itself on 1 May 1964. The pair had to canoe down the Saigon River to reach the sewer entrance, but they got stopped by the harbor police on patrol, but were able to bribe their way out of it with money and a story that they were simple smugglers going to pick up a load of goods a common practice in the area. After the harbor police, the two commandos proceeded to the sewer entrance and again worked their way through the sewer system, which emptied out near a large ship, which turned out to be the USNS card this time. This time gotten new batteries for the timers. The timers were set to go off at 3 a.m. on 2 May 1964. They successfully attached the two bombs to the card and swam back to the sewer. Upon exiting the sewer, they picked up their canoe and paddled back up the Saigon River. Unbelievably, the pair were stopped again by the same harbor police wanting another bribe. 
However, this time the bombs went off, ripping a huge hole in the card. The harbor police raced off to investigate, and then two commandos got away. The USNS card, water gushing in, settled to the bottom of Saigon Harbor, which was only 48 feet deep at that location. The upper portion of the boat was still high and dry. The Viet Cong victory was only temporary as the U.S. Navy called in its ship salvage experts. So skilled was this team that they had the card hull temporarily patched and refloated in only 17 days. The card was then towed to Subic Bay in the Philippines for permanent repairs. The U.S. government refused to admit that the card had been sunk and only stated it had been damaged but quickly repaired. However, the North Vietnamese government put their propaganda machine into overdrive, issuing news reports stating that the American aircraft carrier had been sunk in Saigon Harbor. They even made a postage stamp to commemorate the event. Even the New York Times wrote an article on the sinking. The card was returned to service on 11 December 1964 and remained in service until she was scrapped in 1970 in Kletzgain, Oregon. Sources vary as to the loss of life on the card. Some say five men were lost, others say no men were lost uh, during the explosion and subsequent sinking. Remember the USS America that I told you about a little bit earlier? She was a full-fledged fleet carrier. The card was just an escort carrier. The Navy threw at the America four weeks of weapons testing, various types of uh, weapons to try and sink that thing. And at the end of four weeks, she was still afloat. That's a testament to her builders and her design. Finally, the Navy had to uh, attach some mines to the outer hull and blow some holes in her so she would finally sink to the bottom. The car, being of much lighter construction, only went down with two bombs attached to her hull, making her the last U.S. aircraft carrier to be sunk because of enemy operations. And that is why this is a bit of history that needs to be remembered.